Hey there, my name is Matt Williams, and I am the evangelist here at Datadog. Recently, well, yesterday, I delivered a session at the Nginx Summit here in Boston, and the session was a 10-minute lightning talk, talking about Monitoring 101, specifically around Nginx. And so this is a recording of that session, uh, in case you couldn't make it. Now, one of the benefits of attending a session is if you've got any questions, you can just raise your hand and I'll answer them. You don't get that advantage when you're watching a video, but uh, you can still reach me. Uh, you can reach me at mattw at datadoghq.com, or you can send a tweet. I'm on uh, Twitter as Technovangelist. So this session, again, Monitoring 101, specifically around Nginx, and I usually have to open up with a little bit of a caveat. Uh, now, this session is gonna talk about, you know, what are the top metrics to look at with Nginx, but those top metrics, they're gonna depend on your specific environment. You know, if you've got uh, a, uh, um, an informational site where you are displaying lots of information about some product, your goals are a lot different than somebody who has a shopping cart site who needs to you know, get people to add to the shopping cart and purchase pretty quickly. Um, and, you, and that person has different goals than Datadog. And Datadog has a SaaS service. It's a web-based service. And when you visit your, uh, your account, you're going to see a, a bunch of dashboards. And those dashboards are made up of data that we've been collecting every second for you know, maybe months. And so each of those different people, us and those other two scenarios, have different goals. And so you're going to be alerting on different things and paging on different things. So there's no way I can cover what are the key metrics in your environment. I just, can just cover the key metrics in you know, most environments. And we'll also talk about kind of a framework for thinking about uh, monitoring. Okay, so the first thing uh, is collecting data is cheap. Now there are some people out there that will say, actually no, it's the opposite way. Collecting data is expensive and you should only collect what you actually need because sifting through it all is really tough or collecting a lot of data, you know, uh, having something that collects, you know, a massive amount of data and uploads it to somewhere or saves it somewhere, that's really tough. You're, you're hitting the limits of the machine maybe. And if you've got a service that can't handle that, then yes, collecting data is going to be expensive. But at Datadog, we think collecting data should be cheap uh, because not having the data when you need it is going to be really expensive. Not having the, the data to back up that there was a problem and you, you need to solve it, and after you've solved it, you can see that you've solved it, you know, that, that data is, in, is invaluable. You, you need that data, um, and if you're not collecting it when the problem happens, it's going to be really tough to recreate the situation. So collect data is cheap. Not having it when you need it is really expensive, so you should instrument all the things. You should be collecting data on everything that you can. And that's what we do. We you set up an agent and we start collecting uh, metrics about everything that's going on. Everything that you tell us to uh, collect, we'll go ahead and collect every second. So, okay, cool. Now, now we're getting a lot of data. What do I do with it? You know, there are some of our customers that have 8,000, 10,000, maybe 20,000 metrics that are being collected every second. Every second, we're collecting 20,000 metrics from these customers. And over time, that turns into a lot of metrics. You know, if we look at uh, all of our customers, I think we're at around 2 billion metrics collected every day. Actually, that's probably a bit higher now, but it's just an enormous amount of data to try to sift through. So you need to have a framework in place that helps you figure out what are the key metrics that you should look at. And we group things into three major buckets. First off, there's work metrics. Work metrics are the work. You know, what is your server or what is your application actually doing? What's it trying to spit out? Um, in the case of Nginx, it's serving pages. And so maybe one of the, well, actually one of the work metrics that we uh, advise people to look at is um, number of requests per second. Another one is processing time. You know, you want your server to be able to respond quickly. Uh, and looking at that processing time is really important. So work metrics are, are probably the most important thing to look at. Next to that is resource metrics. On their own, resource metrics 
are kind of useless. You know, one great example of a resource metric is utilization, CPU utilization. You know, if you look at your Linux box or Mac box or Windows box, and you look at CPU utilization, on its own, it's pretty much a useless metric. It's only when you put it in context of work metrics that it makes sense. You know, if you see 90% utilization on your, maybe it's your laptop, and uh, you're doing hardly anything, well, that's really bad. But if you're at 90% and you're doing a lot of stuff, maybe that's good. Uh, so utilization depends on the context provided by the work metrics. And the work metrics really depend on the context provided by those resource metrics. So they really work hand in hand, but the work metrics kind of stand on their own a little bit. Now, similar to resource metrics, there are events. And events include code changes. So when I commit to GitHub, uh, that's a, you know, uh, there, there's an event. Uh, when I deploy using Jenkins, that's a, an event. When I create a Docker container or destroy a Docker container, and create another event. Um, starting up a Nginx server or stopping it or restarting it because of a configuration change, more great events. And these also provide additional context to the work metrics. Okay, so what about alerting and paging? Now these are two different terms. Alert basically means um, triggering some, uh, thresh you know, some threshold has been crossed and you've recorded that somewhere. Paging refers to a kind of an older term. You're talking about pagers. Um, pagers pretty much don't exist. The pager networks all shut down 20 years ago. But the idea there is that you notify somebody. You notify using a text or an email or maybe it's a voice message. So you should alert liberally. You should be creating these uh, thresholds and recording these thresholds all over the place uh, for everything that is relevant in your environment. You should page rather judiciously. Um, so only page on the really, really important things, on the work metrics. So you should page on symptoms and not on the causes of those symptoms. So here's a graphic that tries to make it a little bit simple, simpler to understand. You should page on the symptoms, which are the work metrics. But you should investigate using diagnostics. And those diagnostics come from the work metrics in context and in conjunction with resource metrics and events. Now, resources kind of implies the, the resources underneath. And that's what we're talking about here. So with Nginx, you know, if you're using, if you've got a web server, then the Nginx is probably the top level. And Nginx is uh, doing, has some work metrics and it has some resource metrics and events. And below Nginx is maybe MySQL. MySQL might be the database being used. And so MySQL has its own work metrics and its own resource metrics and its own events. And then below MySQL, there might be the operating system. And the operating system has its own work metrics and resource metrics and events. And the operating system might be relying on the hardware. Or in the case of a virtual machine, such as an instance on AWS, it's a physical box somewhere up in the cloud, and you can get access to those work metrics and resource metrics and events via CloudWatch. And so the idea here is that you start looking at the work metrics at, say, Nginx, and then the resources. Try to figure out where the what the real issue is and go down deeper um, because there's actually an issue in MySQL. Um, and when you re actually realize, what be looking at the resources, that there's actually a problem at the file system, you can dig down a little bit deeper. And then when you see that it's actually maybe a problem with the way the instance was created on AWS, and you look at those lower level metrics. So you start high, and you just keep buried, digging down deeper and deeper and deeper until you find the actual cause of the problem. Now, of course, you wouldn't have access to this if you didn't record all of the things. So that's why it's really important to instrument everything. Let's go back to that uh, original chart. We've got three buckets, work metrics, resource metrics, and events. Work metrics are the really the key thing, and th that's the work of the server, the throughput, the success, the errors, kind of high-level errors, and performance. Okay, so we're here to talk about Nginx specifically. Well, what are the key work metrics with Nginx? Well, first off is request per second. Request per second are the number of requests that come in to your server from around the world. 
and you want this to be at a certain threshold, certain level. Uh, drop connections. Drop connections are bad. You definitely want to know about those, but maybe there's an acceptable level of drop connections. Then there's the server error rate. The server error rate just says that you know, you're experiencing certain problems um, and the server cannot respond. And maybe there's an acceptable level here uh, and you need to uh, page when it goes over that certain level. And then finally, there's request processing time. Request processing time is you know, when a request comes in, it gets processed, and then the server spits it out. That's the processing time. And you want to page on that as well when it goes over a certain threshold, as well as when it goes below that certain threshold. So maybe I'm uh, normal processing time is about 200 milliseconds. When that gets over maybe 500 milliseconds or 1,000 milliseconds, uh, averaged out maybe over the last five minutes, then I want to get paged that there is really a problem here. Similarly, I want to get paged if it's really low. You know, if it's 200 milliseconds all the time, but all of a sudden I'm getting five millisecond um, processing times or one millisecond processing times, well, I know there's a problem because probably one of the steps in the, you know, whatever the server is doing is being skipped over. And it's probably just displaying a white page, a blank page. Well, it can just, you know, Nginx is really good at uh, displaying blank pages because that can be done in almost no time. But that's probably not what your customers want. So when it goes below a certain threshold, I want to get a page that, uh, you know, something really bad is going on with my web server. So those are the key work metrics that we recommend people keep an eye on. Again, depending on your business environment, your business goals, this may be a little bit different. So you should always think about those business goals whenever you think about what are the key things to be looking at. Now these uh, slides and all the points that I talked about came out of five uh, blog posts. Uh, they're all at datadoghq.com slash blog. And you can do a search for Nginx and for Monitoring 101. And uh, you'll find these five articles. So they're great uh, articles to read, especially the Monitoring 101 uh, three articles. We're going to be referencing those in a lot of the articles that we write going forward. Um, and so really, uh, it's a great framework to keep in mind when uh, monitoring anything, not just Nginx. And that brings me to the end of what's roughly 10 minutes. Uh, again, this is Monitoring 101, specifically for Nginx. My name is Matt Williams. I'm the evangelist here at Datadog. And if you have any questions about anything that I covered over the last 10 minutes, please let me know. You can reach me on email. I'm Matt W, M-A-T-T-W, at datadoghq.com. You can also reach me on Twitter. I go by the handle Technovangelist on Twitter, and I'm uh, always happy to answer any questions that you have for me there. So thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Goodbye.